Linda Cohn joining us here in the Man Cave. 5,000 sports centers. How many did we do yes. together? You know, not enough. What the heck? Did you have something against me back then? And I, I was mm. telling the guys, and by the way, it's such, it's wonderful to be here and to be part of this crew. Great. But I... I wanted to do more with you, but that guy KO always yeah. got in the way. Well, I had I had Bob Lee. Yes. So I started with, and then it was KO, and then it was Kenny Main after yes, that. The new team. Yes, and then I ended up going to the six o'clock. Who was your? Uh, who did you start with? Chris Myers. I, uh, July eleventh. I, I know you will. Can I tell you something? First guy, I've, you know, everyone thinks about my laugh, right? It's a cackle. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We've I've left it enough to you and what you do. But I always told Chris Myers, you know, he was my first, and he was the first that made me laugh. And I hope he forgave me that I had about a zillion more Sports Center anchor partners after him. But the laughing on the air, Charlie Steiner would Charlie would get started, <laughs> right? That's a great point. He was he was. Never and once stopped. he started, then it was he was done. Yeah, like he he lost it. Did you ever have one of those moments where you just started and you're going, uh oh, I'm in, I'm in a little bit of trouble here? No question. With one of your former co-anchors and mine, Kenny Maine, and. The thing is, Dan, he would never have to say anything. You'd read your on-camera lead-in, and you would sense his presence and that look as he's looking at you as you're trying to be serious at the camera, and he would make me laugh. I think it happened a few times on a Did You Know. Okay. You remember oh, wow. Did You yeah, Know? Yeah, Did You Know. Yes. How were you your first time on? I was nervous, but I sort of, Dan, I just knew that I didn't want to screw up, number one, and number two, I was so desperate to let the viewers know how much not only I knew about sports, but how much I love sports. And I really wanted that to come out and burst through the screen. What was the advice I gave you? Didn't you say that I told you about, you know, be careful with, you know, yes. the previous women who were there and yes. sort of how people viewed them and treated them? And I like how you softened it. To me, I looked at <laughs> We spoke on the phone, yes. and um, the great Gary Miller was the one that said, hey, Dan will be, love to talk with you before you walk through the doors in Bristol. And I was so excited. I'm talking to Dan Patrick. He's going to give me tremendous advice. He's such a great guy. I love him. I love watching him. He's a legend. And then you're like, you know, all the women before you failed. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Dan. Way to roll out the red carpet. That, that, that seems more positive than I remember, <laughs> Linda. <laughs> Oh, uh, well, I, I did that to Rich Eisen, too. I, I would be like, hey, yes. don't screw it up. Like, he hadn't even done his first one. and He was nervous, right? Yes. But it's it's one of those where you're trying to, you know, there's so much tension there, so much competition there, that instead of saying, hey, you're going to do great or something, I wanted you to say, you know, there's a lot of women who screwed up before you here. <laughs> yeah, but you know what? Maybe it inspired me. Why don't you take some credit for my 23 no, and a half year run? I, I, I can't take any credit for Words any of Words of wisdom from Dan Patrick. But it was a, it's a tough environment, mm. just generally. Especially back in the yes. early 90s. But it was a tough environment. Um, not, I, and I speak for myself. I, I think that the anchors, you were always on eggshells. You weren't quite sure if you were. Really? Even yeah. for you? I mean, I bet your viewers and listeners are no. stunned right now that you were at one point point on eggshells oh my gosh when keith and i got called in to management and we thought we were getting fired how soon into the coupling did that happen that um, meeting? it was it was a it, uh, probably a couple of years in but yeah we went into the third floor conference room um, i'm familiar yeah <laughs> and and we were we we were in trouble that's where bosses were banging the table and yelling at us and not going to let us be bigger than the show and that's when we had to start doing this as Sports Center instead of saying the big show. Yeah, we were we were in trouble. I have a story like that myself. Is that two years into my run, it was 1994. As a matter of fact, you know how we associate major events in our life, good and bad, with sporting events. So it was Game Seven, Rangers Devils Eastern Conference Final, 1994. After the six o'clock Sports Center called in, same conference room, third floor. Oh boy! And they weren't happy. They said, Linda, we know you know sports. We know you love sports but we're not seeing it on TV. We're going to give you six months. We need to see improvement. Yes, true story. They hired a video coach and to look and watch me do highlights and hone my skills. Oh, no. And I look, I was devastated. I was de really devastated. And then the next day I'm like, well, wait a minute. They could have fired me right then and there. I'm going to use it as a positive and say, they still see something in me. They still believe in me. And the rest is history. So I almost got fired two years in. But... 
I didn't know we had a video coach. Well, for I guess for me, maybe you didn't need one, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it did help because now I'm when people think on my career among the many things they think of it, you know, doing highlights that that's one of my specialties. The sports media now, as opposed to when you started, what about What's it? What's the big difference? Oh, well, the technology. Were you there in that meeting? I remember tall Scott Van Pelt standing up in front of the bosses when they were trying to explain to us, hey, we know you take pride in writing everything you do. And setting up the drama for a highlight. Mm -hmm. But uh, we have an idea. We are going to tell the viewers who won the game before you even give them the highlight and write the on-camera lead and to set up the game before. In other words, welcome to the bottom line. Wait, when was this? This was like what? Mid-90s? 94, 93? What? I was at that meeting. Where you was there? I? No. I... <laughs> Didn't you go to these mandatory talent meetings? I don't think so. <laughs> I don't... Uh, so I you remember the birth of the bottom line where we would tell people the score before oh my we God. even gave them a highlight. It crushed us. Scott Van Pelt stood up and, and said, are you serious? <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. I didn't know that. And Breaking I, news here on the TNT. Well, I never, show. I never would have adhered to that. That's for sure. Here, <laughs> let me tell you how it ended. You know, there's no buildup, no drama, no nothing, no anticipation. Yes. There. Oh, my God. It's everything what sports wasn't. Do you know that we met prior to SportsCenter? Please fill me in. You obviously made an impact. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we met at CNN in New York. Oh, wow. You came in from Seattle. Yes, right. Which, yeah. yeah. And uh, I was told by my boss to show you around that day. And you were in our New York. We were at Five Penn Plaza. And nice. you came in, and Artie Burko was my producer. Artie Burko. And you came in, and I remember that uh, my boss said, show her around. I don't know what happened after that with <laughs> CNN, but yeah. the next time I saw you was at uh, SportsCenter. You have also contributed breaking news now to me. See? I did not. I did not make a big impact <laughs> on you. This yeah. did not. This is what happens when you get older. Really. You yeah. remember, you know, that the Detroit Red Wings were yeah. better <laughs> on a back-to-back -back games, <laughs> their record, than you remember that Dan Patrick at CNN, CNN was my tour guide. Yes, I was. Yes. I'm sure you did a great job. Um. <laughs> do you, what else do you remember from that? I think I told you not to go to ESPN <laughs> because it was really tough there on, on women or something right, like that. Some positive affirmation. And, sure. and you do 5,000 and, yeah. and people go, oh, God, which, which one stands out? It's, it's weird know. how I didn't, I, I don't look back and go, oh, the one that stood out is right. that. Yeah. Person. It's the same with me. Like we delivered the mail is how I viewed it. Yeah. And not that it was boring because no. every show was really unpredictable like sports is and should be and that was great but you're right of all the interviews i have done that's of course the big question yeah. and i said i don't know it's one big happy blur you know a cloud but not a dark cloud a bright cloud a happy <laughs> cloud <laughs> i'm floating but it really it really uh, was but you know what sadly the ones if you did have to ask me to pin uh, a show down there was a sad show that i did and i'll never forget it it was after we lost tom Mees. yeah and I worked with him a lot early on when I joined SportsCenter on those late 2 a.m. Easterns on the weekend. And he was great because so many reasons. He had that passion for sports, very animated. And he was, people who don't know Tom Meese, he was one of the first yeah, at ESPN. Yeah. And uh, we lost him in a tragic accident. But I had to do the show, the Sunday morning show with Jack Edwards. And it was all about remembering Tom Meese. And what's really bizarre, and even Jack Edwards said this to me, I appeared to take on his um, animated style, his antics, as I was doing the highlights. Very handy, you know, moving like that, looking at my co-anchor, trying to get them involved. After the show, I'll never forget, Jack said to me, he goes, it was so eerie that you, like there was an inner Tommy's to you. So you do remember certain shows, but ones with meaning. Yeah, I... Um... But you don't. I, I did remember that one. Yeah. Uh, and I had to do the uh, uh, Tom Mees, uh, Valvano, when Jim Valvano yes. died. Yes, okay, yes. And he said, uh, I, I, I remember those, not like funny shows no. as much as it is that uh, when Valvano died, Tom Mees died, uh, when the uh, Cleveland Indian pitchers died. In, in the, the boating yes, accident. in spring training. Yes. And I remember you're looking at that camera and it feels like it's looking back at you just so curious about what are you, what are you, 
you know, you're supposed to be, you know, presenting this in this regal manner. You know, I'm, I'm an anchor here. I'm, th I'm thinking I'm no different than anybody who's out there now who's absorbing this. Like, this is really, really difficult to deliver this without being emotional. And, and you're not allowed to be that way. But when Valvano died, I, I mean, I, I thought I was going to cry on the air. It was that deep and painful. And, you know, you're, you're, I think we allowed ourselves to show emotion without getting in trouble. Like, we were okay with that. But it was usually goofy emotion, not real emotion, raw emotion. And that's what came out with a couple of those shows. But ask any of your viewers or listeners, that's what they love most. And that's why they have an emotional connection. They had it with you. They have it with you now, obviously. But back in the day in Sports Center, Dan, that's what people tell me. We're their comfort zone. Just like we have an emotional connection, and I still do, you know, with my teams and certain players. For these viewers of Sports Center for back in the day, that's why Sports Center will live on. I really believe that with all the changes. Yeah. I just believe that because people are in their comfort zone, whoever's in that chair watching. Well, you don't know what role you play in somebody's life. If I was doing the 11 o'clock, I'm seeing you before you're, you know, you're seeing me before you go to bed. It's the last show you might be right. watching. Do we put a smile on your face, something to think about? And then that next morning, or if you're doing the re-airs or you're doing late night and somebody's watching or children are watching in the morning, that impact appointment viewing has never been lost on me that you, uh, you allowed us to come into your, your world and to be able to do that. And you've been doing it for almost 23 years now. And plus, and, and I say this with you and Susie and Andrea Kramer. Right. To do it at a standard that it wasn't about being a woman. It was about just doing it right. And that's the best compliment you can give me. And when I first started, I'd run into people, you know, wherever I am. And they would say to me, Linda, don't take this the wrong way. And it was always the 18 to 34 male, which was our demographic. Yeah. But I never took my sports from a woman before you. Yes. And you mentioned two amazing legends, of course, and Susie and Andrea as well. Um, and that's the best compliment. Yeah, because I think that we want to uh, cater we want to categorize it and say, well, as a woman, yeah. but it, it, you can't be as a woman on Sports Center. You have to either know it or you don't. Right. And and that's where when you're a co-anchor with somebody, you want to know that they have your back, that they have something that they could add to it, or if you don't know something, they know something. That teamwork that you have. Uh, so to to have that and it and it should be a compliment because you and Susie Colbert and Andrea Kramer. It was, you did your job. You didn't do your job as a woman. Yeah. And I ne it never came to my mind that, that I was just loving sports so much. And I was doing this amazing job. And I, and I wanted to make people proud. And that was really always the bloodline throughout my whole career. The male bosses that yeah. took a chance on me. It was sort of like when I used to play hockey and, and, and the coach of the boys hockey team in my high school decided to put me on the team, my high school boys team. And I said, I won't let you down because yeah. I know he took a chance. Well, I said those words to the male bosses that took a chance on this Long Island girl to talk nationally about sports. And it worked out pretty well. <laughs> how, how long do you want to do it? I don't know. I know I have to be involved in sports. I may not obviously host Sports Center forever. I I just know that sports has to be in my life. Um, and if it's just being a, a fan, that's okay. But I enjoy that roller coaster ride, Dan. I love it. The highs and the lows. Well, but when it's live. Oh, it's tremendous. There's nothing better and worse <laughs> when it's live. Right. But that's what we love because we love those challenges. So we're willing to risk it. We're willing to risk the crash landing yeah. for that incredible high that only a few people get. It's great to see you. Same here. You look great. Thanks. And congrats. Thanks for having me. It's so good to be here. And congrats to you. Thank you. I love your man cave. Thank you, Linda. You're always <laughs> welcome in the man cave. Thanks. And you saw familiar faces over yes. there with Fritzy and Pauly. And yes, they haven't even talked to me. I have the headphones on. I was I wanted them to chime in. They were told not to. <laughs> they were told not to. Did Fritzy hug you? I got the hug. Yeah, yeah, Pauly. I do remember the first time Linda filled in for you once or twice right. at ESPN, maybe 2005. I didn't know Linda, and she always, I didn't know at the time, covered up her Long Island accent for TV. Attempted and, to. And she came over to radio and started talking to me. I was like, wow. But she crushed it on radio when she filled in for you. She was a blast. 
Oh, so you had the accent on radio. Yeah, because, you know, you're sort of like, you're just ad-living. You're just having a conversation. Yeah. And that's another thing I'm most proud of, Dan, as I talk faster. The accent comes out. I don't want to lose who Linda Cohn is. I don't want to lose who I am. That's why I've never become jaded about sports or players or athletes, my teams. Same with where I come from. This is me. Take it or leave it. Love me or not love me. Linda Cohn. <laughs> And of course, I had a there's, laugh. There's the there's the laugh. <laughs> the cackle. We would hear the laugh down the hall, and I go, "Elko's here," and her office was next to mine, so I would just hear her conversations. You, and I, you, you wore those headphones in I your did. office. There were times when I go, "Oh my god, Elko!" I could hear her through the walls there. I don't know who she was talking to, but did you just cackle? I go, "Oh my god!" 